Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you for setting some of the themes of what we're going to discuss over the next two days. Uh, I'm going to move right into our next session and briefly introduce Neil. Uh, Neil Peterson is from South Africa. Uh, he's an adventurer, a motivational speaker. Uh, he's also a business executive. Uh, Neil is here with us today. And he is going to share with us a very interesting and powerful journey. A journey that he took around the world alone in a yacht by himself. Uh, before Neil actually comes here to talk to you, uh, you will watch a video uh, about his experiences and then Neil will be uh, shortly after that uh, talking to you. So with that, can we have the video come on please? of sailing a boat around the world. I did not see the racial implications of being black wanting to break into a sport which is predominantly a white man and rich man's game. Being black in South Africa during the apartheid era was a frightening period. But I wanted to sail so badly, I would not take a no. So I knew I had to go and design my own. I had to build my own boat. People looked at my boat and said, that thing will never cross an ocean. I was approaching Hurricane Strength winds. I would hold my breath and sometimes I couldn't hold my breath long enough. I fought to the very, very end. Two days later, I saw Cape Horn. I couldn't believe that I had actually just achieved it. I just sailed around the world. I was a child with a dream. I was a boy who tried the dream. I have now become a man who has succeeded at the dream and you are part of my success, I want to say thank you very much. Thank you and welcome. We all know people in this world who carry baggage. You know those folks who say, poor me, it's not my fault, I can't do this, I can't do that. Well today, as CIO leaders, as CTOs, I'm going to show you an alternative. Instead of baggage, let's choose to carry a treasure chest. Yes, a treasure chest. The only difference between baggage and a treasure chest is in the content. And we get to decide what that content shall be. For me, those choices are driven by a philosophy. In my life, there are no barriers, only solutions. I repeat, in my life, there are no barriers, only solutions. And hence, I was born with three advantages. Now, you're going to be wondering about these advantages, but just bear with me. We are all about transformation. We are all about change. We are all about trying to achieve success and ultimately significance. My three advantages. One, I was born in apartheid South Africa as a black person. And we know the racial prejudice that encounters. As a black person in South Africa, my opportunities were very, very limited. Advantage number two, I was born in a working class family. My father had been a commercial diver, but my father became an alcoholic. And through this disease of alcoholism, he could not hold down a job and ultimately became a factory laborer. His income at the time of his retirement was less than 100 US dollars a month in an economy that required five or six hundred dollars just to survive, way below the poverty line. My mother was a school teacher. And again, you know, the contributions that school teachers make to society are immense, but the compensation is minuscule. In our family, we lived on the borderline of poverty. We struggled. Advantage number three. You see, today I can walk, but I don't take this for granted because I could not always walk. When the big guy upstairs was handing out hip sockets, I was not paying attention. 
And so in my left hip, the ball and soccer joint, I did not have the cup. So I spent the first five years of my life in and out of the hospital. That last surgery left me in a plaster cast from my ankle to my chest. CIOs, friends, family. If I wanted to see a different view, I had to be physically picked up and shifted. Now, you hear me speak about my three advantages, but you hear me speak about prejudice, economic hardship, and physical disability. And right now you're saying to yourself, this guy is crazy. Those are not advantages, those are disadvantages. Well, each and every one of us has been dealt a hand of cards. We can't change that fact. But how we choose to play the hand is up to us. We have been in a very challenging market for the last 18 to 24 months. Some companies have succeeded, others have completely struggled and been really challenged. And you wonder, what is there for you next? Well, for me, it was driven, success was driven by a belief in my life there are no barriers, there are only solutions. I looked at those three things, the apartheid, the financial challenges, the physical disability, and I said if I could overcome these three things, whatever life will throw at me, I can overcome that too. And when I choose to carry no chips on my shoulders, that is how we turn disadvantages into advantages. That is how we take our experiences, and instead of letting them become baggage, we put them in the treasure chest of our lives and experiences from which we grow and become strong. As leaders, we have to find the strength within ourselves. As a child, there were no excuses. My mother would not allow me to look at my circumstances as failure, but as a reason why I had to work harder and smarter to accomplish things. So whilst I lay in the hospital bed, one day a doctor comes to my bedside, a colored hospital. I could not go to any hospital, but a certain hospital for my age group. And this doctor shows up and he says, son, what are you interested in? And I said, boats. I grew up in the coastal city of Cape Town, South Africa. I grew up with the stories of my father and his time at sea. I grew up in a community where many were fishermen. I had gone through water therapy between operations to strengthen the leg. The sea was an integral part of who I was. A few days later, that doctor showed up with a stack of sailing magazines. Nobody in my community had sailed. But I looked at those pictures. And a picture will paint a thousand words. The world of possibilities. The world of hope. When I looked at those pictures, I saw beautiful boats gliding through the oceans. And I thought, aha, maybe one day, I could be on that boat. I saw pictures of tropical blue waters, which might have been the Caribbean, or may have been one of the islands off your Indian coast. And I thought, wow, just perhaps one day, I could see those tropical blue waters. Where we have hope, we have possibilities of, su of surviving and success. If we take away hope, we end up in a world that implodes. We did not invent, you did not discover the technologies, you did not lead and implement the technologies that you've done without hope, without belief, without knowing that there is a better world. We might be struggling at that moment, but we must believe that as things change, things will become better. But for me, that word better didn't happen until age 11, when I had one of the most transformational moments of my life. I read this book, which I got from a public library, Joshua Slocum, Sailing Alone Around the World. This was the story of a man who had taken on the sea at the turn of the last century. A man who went alone to the, to the sea and took on the big storms and the famous capes. When I read this story, I knew I wanted to be a sailor. I wanted to own a yacht. I wanted to see a place called Cape Horn, the southernmost cape of the Americas. So I remember as I finished this book, going to my father and saying, hey, dad, 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 please, give a boat, give a boat. But on the money my father was earning, he could not afford to buy me that boat. But my mother said, son, stay reading, stay dreaming. The application of knowledge is the power. Well, as my father could not buy me a boat, I said, dad, will you?